And Tom joined... I've been rehired, thank you. You're hired. And Tom joined us now. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Hello. So oh, good to, to see be you. Here. I was just admiring all your beautiful suits. You always look so good oh, well, on television. Well, that's very kind of you. Just Double-breasted today. Oh, very yes, nice. I've gone with the DB. The DB just to nice. hide, hide some you look Christmas. very lovely. Christmas. Not at all. Um, you look beautiful. Thanks, everybody. The Apprentice, uh, you're fired. Yeah. It's a lovely show. Did you always... Like, when they pitched it to you, were you always a fan of The Apprentice? Was it always something you wanted to do when they pitched it to you? Or yes, you and I, what I like about The Apprentice is it's one of those shows, I think it still does this, where people sit around as a family or as, a, as housemates and they watch it together, largely just so they can comment on the people in it and sort of, <laughs> you know, go, oh, I could have oh, done that, what are they doing? Oh, they're idiots. So um, I, I think it's a nice show like that because it brings people together. But doing the after show, we have a lot of fun on your fire and we yeah. get to meet the candidates, obviously, and get to know them and show their human side. I didn't realise they weren't allowed to have their telephone. You know people don't realise. It's, 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 it's an exclusive. It's an exclusive. So that puts um, a lot more pressure on them. They can't so, just Google so something. They're not, and they're not allowed to... Re to make it all totally fair, they can't do any research on the task around when they're actually doing the task. So it's very strictly controlled to make it fair between the teams and everything. So they can't just, like... We had one last week where the guy didn't know what TBSP stood for, which, of course, is tablespoon. Mm -hmm. But when you're under pressure, you go, I don't know what TBSP stands for. What does that mean? And normally, we just Google the everything. Stress. But can't. I know, the stress for them. It's and then you've got a group of people around you who probably don't want you to succeed that much. Well, well. exactly. It's very competitive. And then it's being filmed, which, yeah. as we all know, makes everything much more stressful. You've got Karen <laughs> so in the corner looking at you like this. Yes, people <laughs> shoving cameras in your face all the time. <laughs> I can't even look at the right camera that's on me now. <laughs> but that one, that one, that one. Um, the, um, the, so it's very stressful, very stressful for them. So we try and have a laugh and um, just sort of, uh, you know, show the human side, because I do think at least they have a go, those candidates. The worst thing go. is you've got to perform by the end of it. You've got to perform. Do you, can you mm. kind of relate to that pressure of having oh, to perform? Alison, yeah, I mean, when I started... <laughs> I was a stand-up for, like, 13 years before I did any television, but I used to find the pressure of doing stand-up... Like, I go to these clubs and, you know, people just hated me. <laughs> Because they'd be like these, like, really, like, you know, quite aggressive, like, blokes on stag parties and stuff, sailors, probably. And um, they'd all be there. And I'd come out and start talking about my mum's hostess trolley. And people would be absolutely furious. And um, so <laughs> I had to sort of learn to um, deal with that pressure and find a way through. No, but I think sometimes when you... Well, obviously, you're really good now, and I suppose you don't feel... Do you feel pressure still when you go out on tour? Um, I do a bit, cos you want to do a good job, yeah. but, you know, you try and... Someone told me once, nerves are just the flip side of excitement, and I thought, that's good advice, isn't it? That's mm. good, so you try and see it in a positive way. Did but you, I do long, sometimes. How yeah. long did it take you before you were comfortable on stage, then? If you, you, know, if you were going through these gigs where you were... No, not well, dying. probably like 14, 15 years of it. Yeah. Probably. When I, I mean, I still have an anxiety to do it well, but now I can enjoy it a bit more. But back then, you know, I was. Did quite... you ever go through a period of like, this is just, just too much hassle? Yes, about 14 or 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just kept doing it. And, um, and then, you know, if you keep going with something, it usually turns out to right in the end. Yeah. So that's what I do. That's what I did. So how does it make you feel when you get the, the royal seal of approval? Oh, from, oh, well, I don't like to mention you know, it. You know, HRA. <laughs> I don't my, like to mention it, really, <laughs> but I did do the Royal Variety, sure, sure. And, um, appar well, apparently, I mean, I don't like to... I don't, I don't like to <laughs> look at praise, obviously, but um, apparently they, their Royal Highness has enjoyed it. Well, no, he didn't just enjoy it, did he? I mean, you've made a big, deal, <laughs> complete meal out of it now, but let's, well, I, I suppose we should take a look well, at it. Well, you know, I'm, humility is my middle name. <laughs> take a look, Tom. <laughs> I'm not a robot. I promise I'm not a robot. OK, we'll give you another chance. Try and read this joined-up handwriting. <laughs> oh, I promise I'm not a robot. Please give me one last chance. OK, one last chance. Click on the box that says, I'm not a robot. <laughs> I promise I'm not a robot. You know robots can't lie. I clicked on the box. Please, now, can I come on your toaster website? Now you can come on our toaster website. You go on the toaster website, though, the first thing that happens is a pop-up comes up. It's this woman called Geraldine. She's got a sharp blonde bob and a headset on. She goes, hi, how can I help you? Geraldine's a blooming robot! <laughs> He's yeah. crying. Oh. He's crying. Maybe with he was just really sad. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I just made him very emotional. I don't know. But they were very what nice. Was that, what was that skit? What were you doing? That's from my new show. Actually, it's on tour at the moment. Oh, hello. Is it not on your yellow pages, there, Dermot? Tom's coming to us completely. And it continues until June. Until June. Yes, going on until June. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and um, did a little bit of a road test yeah, with yeah, HRH. Yeah. Uh, well, well, that's well. You know, I had been doing a little. I've been on tour for a little while now, Dermot. But um, the uh, yes, that was very thrilling to do it for them, and they were very nice. They came around afterwards and said. 
Bartolo, and Defoe. they were such lovely people. We obviously resonated so with him, yeah. didn't well, we? Well, you know, we're all frustrated by technology, aren't we? It is very, very annoying. True. So I try and try and make light of the things that <laughs> stress us all out. What I love about you, because obviously we did Bake Off, <gasps> Extra Slice together, yes. and your communication with other people and your <laughs> the way you communicate with others is just so good. You're so good with just people randomly. Oh, thank you. I like... You're oh, I just so like, good. I just like talking, really. Yeah. And, and I think since I've learned to talk, apparently, I just went up... I always like talking to older... Older women, apparently. I just was, from the age of about three, would just love to go and talk to older ladies. And, in fact, I'd often get lost in the supermarket deliberately... Um, just so you? I could go, just so I could hear my name called out on the tannoy. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and also so I could talk to the, the people who work behind the customer service desk in the supermarket. So I don't know. You're I just interested in people. Just interested in, pe in people. I love that but about you. I mean, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, Otherwise, it's really nice. Because I think we spend so long on our screen scrolling and getting angry and, you know, worrying about things. And actually, when you talk to other people, you realise actually it's all right, isn't it? Everything's all right. Do you love that for, for material for stand up? Like, there's, I read this lovely story about Larry Grayson where oh. he had the only his parents had the only phone in the street yeah and so oh, yeah. so uh, people would come around and use their phone every day pay really? his mum to use the phone <laughs> and he'd sit on the top of the stairs and just listen to women call their sons or husbands <laughs> away and just and that's where he got so much idea from so much material from yes I suppose I probably used to elbow my way into my mum's coffee mornings and just like as a kid just sit there and listen to them all talking about whatever personal problems they had going yeah. on. And I'd kind of just lap it up or probably jib in with my own advice on it. And um, I just sort of, yeah, I just kind of like that. I like kind of yeah. suburban normal life, really. Even though, you know, maybe I dress a bit flamboyantly, but I'm actually very, very normal, <laughs> very normal. My mother used to work in the Army and Navy. She was a, a department store. Uh, Not the military. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even wonderful story she was. Mm -hmm. You know what Dermot's in Bake Off? Yes, he's, you're doing the stand-up to cancer one, yeah. aren't you? Have you got any advice for him? Oh, do you know what a tablespoon is? Yes. Great. Um, are you good at cooking under pressure? Yes. Can you use a weighing scales? I believe so. Um, I don't know if it's enough, but uh, <laughs> have you... We'll muddle through. You'll muddle through. I mean, you truly, did well in Baker. Well, I was brilliant, you're right. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, I didn't, I was terrible. And I, I do all these things with baking and cooking shows and stuff, and I think I would know something. Got there, knew absolutely nothing. Uh, and it's very stressful when you've got Prue Lee staring at you. People don't realise, she's very terrifying. She yeah. is the most pressured out of all of them. Well, you could yeah. get caught on one of those uh, necklaces or something. And then the Apprentice Earth, You're Fired... You? Let me read my yellow sheet. The Apprentice You're Fired yes. airs 10pm, BBC <laughs> 2 on Thursdays, after The Apprentice. Yes. Uh, Say it like you BBC mean it, Dermot, not just like you... We're not in a meeting. <laughs> oh, no, hang on, I'm going to sell this bit. And Tom's comedy saw completely... Yes, lovely. How long have you been a presenter for now? <laughs> <laughs> Too long, but it's Too happened. long. <laughs> and what people can apply if they want to be on the next series of The Apprentice. It is a great experience, I will say that. And they can go on the BBC website to do that. I'm looking down the barrel of the... <laughs> Camera to say it. <laughs> go on the BBC website and apply to be on the next series of The Apprentice. That's how you do it, Dermot. You don't just read it off a piece oh, of paper. Oh, it's a lovely, it's a lovely <laughs> sell, that. <laughs> I'm a terrible guest, Thank aren't you, I? Tom. Oh, thanks for having me. No, you're me. the best Thank guest. you this lovely view you've got here. It it's is. so beautiful. Stunning. Here. I know, by the River Thames. Gosh. <laughs>